everybody, I'm back. <laughs> now, today's video is gonna be a little different than usual. Instead of doing has-been hotel stuff like I've been doing, I figured I'd show you guys what I do in my spare time. <laughs> or just show you character designs that I don't know what to do with. They just come and go and I'm stuck with them. <laughs> so, for this line of adopts, yes, it's a line I'm making four. <laughs> so for the first one that I've made is uh, a lunar moth. And I've made Lunar Moths before. I have two that I've kept for myself because they're for two different projects. Uh, I think the first one I made was for a D&D &D thing. And I think the second one was for something else. And I don't remember. Oh, I remember now. The second one was for Pride Month. I made like an asexual moth goddess thing. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so I've done it. I've done this kind of moth before and I really wanted to try something different than what I did with the last two even though technically uh, the goddess one did have a s bit of a space theme going on but I kind of wanted to go a little crazier with this one with like all the stars and colors and then astral tattoo symbols or whatever <laughs> I just wanted it to have to have this like big galaxy vibe and I think it came out pretty well I mean normally when I do stuff like this I don't do symmetrical poses so sorry for <laughs> it being super simple by being you know symmetrical on both sides but it is still kind of difficult to do that when you have all this extra extra stuff on it it's the only way I can explain it like work smarter not harder in my opinion but yeah uh I know you guys probably won't see it until the end of the video. I did zhuzh her up a bit more than normal. Uh, I can't ever really record Photoshop. My computer does not like it when I do that. So, But usually when I go on Photoshop, I just add the glow effect, which is just slapping on color and using the, the blur tool. And then also doing it to all the extra white. And then layering on top some white on top of all the stars and blurring it just a little bit so it looks more... My mom calls it powdery. I can't I can't think of a word for it. But yeah, gives it that more like shinier effect than just a flat white color. So yeah. Uh, and then I never planned on making the wings kind of like a shawl either. But I thought it would be like way more fun to do. All I can say that was when I was sketching this, I was just not in the mood. Ugh. Lately, sketching for me has just become a chore, but I'm more of a color person anyways, so sketching is always going to be boring. Do you guys get bored sketching, or is it just me? I don't know. I feel like sketching is the boring part versus, like, coloring and adding effects. Uh, I got a few questions that I highlighted. I'm going to answer a few from my Instagram first just to get them out of the way. So I get these kind of questions a lot and I never really know how to answer them exactly because I feel like I'll never be able to 100% answer it, but uh, it's what's your inspiration for clothes or outfit designs for your characters? So it's hard to explain because like I took a lot of fashion classes when I was in high school and college and I am a huge fashion person. My my grandmother taught me how to sew when I was like six years old and we watched Project Runway together. I've made almost all my cosplay costumes by hand. I started working at a theater company doing costumes and sets. So I've always just had a vast knowledge of clothes and fashion and costumes. So it's never really, it's never really clicked with me that inspiration is needed because I've always just known what I want to do and I can see it in my head. So I don't have much inspiration when it comes to clothes. Like I know a lot of people can see an outfit and get inspired by that. I don't get inspired by that. My, my brain makes up the clothes. <laughs> And I feel, I feel bad for not being able to answer that correctly for you guys. But that's literally how it is for me, this one. I feel like I've answered this like a hundred times. And I've, I, know you got, I know some of you are just coming into this. But will you make human disguises for the hell of a boss cast? Yes, yes. I said yes. I am doing it. It's just going to be a while. Because I'm trying to save up cash for Christmas. And right now me and my mom are in like this race to buy stuff for each other. And like ever since my grandfather died, it's just been an issue about getting gifts for everybody because he was like the big gift giver. And now we're all scrambling and not knowing what to do for each other. Uh, this one too. I don't know how to answer this very well either. It, the question is, can you give a tip in how to find a good reference voice for an OC? I can't really answer that with 100% accuracy. I, I really can't. Only you know what your character sounds like 
and it's up to you to find the perfect voice. For me, it takes me forever. I'm so picky and I know what I want because I know what I hear in my head. And if I can't find it, then I will wait until somebody comes along and I will be like, I need to sample your voice. I like it. Can I, (laughs) let me just say something into this phone real quick. (laughs) I've just always been that way. I'm very picky. I really can't give any good tips because like, only you know what your character sounds like. I I really can't give any good references. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, now I'm going to move over to the YouTube comments. Let's see. Uh, I feel like I've answered this one a lot, but who's your favorite character in, in Hell of a Boss? Uh, it is Verasica because, I mean, she's, she's just, she's just, she's just great, okay? That's just, I can't. <laughs> I can't get into it. What OC are you most proud of? It can be any you've ever made. Why is it your favorite? Uh, that's like picking a favorite kid. I really can't decide. I always change who my favorite is, like almost every single day. Because before, my favorite used to be Happy. And then it changed to the twins. And then it changed to Vince. And now it's back to Happy. And some days it's just Pyro. And I'm like, I don't have a favorite. <laughs> They're all my favorite. I love all my OCs, except for the ones that I made when I was in middle school. They can all burn in a dumpster fire. I don't want to get into it. I don't. <laughs> uh, if you can be part of the Has Been Hotel crew, not cast, what would you change? Husk. 100% I would. Well, no. Technically, I would change Husk, but that wouldn't be the first thing I did. First thing I would do, I would make Angel Dust the main character. And I would make Charlie the secondary main character. Because both of their stories intertwine with each other. But I would rather see Hell through Angel's eyes versus Charlie's eyes. Because, I mean, we already have so many happy-go-lucky bubbly characters that are like, the world would be perfect if you just have a little optimism like no i really just want to see this broken character get through life that's all i want to (laughs) see i really don't want to see this happy-go-lucky princess prouncing around trying to fix everybody it's just i don't know it's been done before and it makes it sound harsh but it has been done before next question Uh, how old are you (laughs) what's your favorite candy what's your favorite has-been hotel character Alrighty. it's gonna shock some of y'all I am 25. <laughs> and my favorite candy, Butterfingers. And my favorite has been hotel character, Alistair. And I tried really hard not to make him my favorite, but he just freaking stabbed his way into my heart, damn it. Ooh, this is a fun one. What do you think makes an OC great versus what makes it terrible, both for personality and design? Okay, what I think makes an OC great personality-wise is that they have flaws. A character cannot be 100% perfect at all times. There needs to be something about them that is just... They need to have a flaw. It doesn't need to be a major flaw or anything, but, you know, you need character development and you need character growth. Especially if you're designing a young character. Like, your young character cannot be perfect. That's the most irritating character trait I will never be a part of. I can't stand like the 13 year old prodigy character. It's just like you can do it but there's other ways of doing it like you know Peter Parker is a teen prodigy but he still has like a lot of problems and issues and character growth and that's what makes us like him so much. As for design I've always been told that less is more And I understand that in terms of animation, but if you're going for a more, like, interesting design, then yeah, add a bit more or add some details that represent your character. Because I see a lot of characters that don't really represent their personality or the way that they act. It's just weird to me sometimes because... When you, wanna, when you look at a character, you want to know them before they ever say a word. I try to put that into all my characters. I feel like that's important. Uh, anyway, that's all the time I have for right now. Uh, I will answer more questions in the next video where I will be designing Mothman. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Oh, I'm excited. Ugh, I can't wait to show you guys. But anyway, I hope you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.